Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1978 Spanish Giallo film Trauma. And this one I was watching through the uh, Forgotten Gialli Volume 1 that I got from Vinegar Syndrome. So was very excited to dig into this. I will have reviews of the other two on here, which are The Police Are Blundering in the Dark and The Killer is One of Thirteen. So you can look out for those. Now, this is an image. I'm sorry. This one is an image from Trauma, which is very nicely rendered there. Anyway, this one's directed by Leon Klimovsky, um, who did a lot of kind of Western films, a lot of war films, which were very popular back in the day. Also did The Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman. Sounds fun. Dr. Jekyll versus the Werewolf. The Vampire's Night Orgy. Vengeance of the Zombies. A Dragonfly for Each Corpse. I like the name of that. The People Who Own the Dark and Night of the Walking Dead. Just to name a few. This was written by Juan Jose Porto, who also wrote scripts for The Stepmother, Cross of the Devil, Night of the Walking Dead, and also Carlos Puerto, who wrote a script for Satan's Blood. So, just so you know. Jumping right into this, I didn't find any, like, behind-the-scenes interesting information on this film. This one, you know, obviously it's because it's forgotten Gialli, so that kind of makes sense. There's not a lot known about it. So it was definitely worth watching for that reason. Now, very suspicious from the get-go that Daniel, or, or Daniel, uh, I'm just going to call him Daniel. Daniel ends up showing up at Veronica's place immediately uh, after, and even like makes some weird comments where he's just like, yeah, I was just, you know, aimlessly driving around. And um, do you rent rooms here? It, it's just like this weird thing. So through those interactions and then the fact that people just keep showing up at Veronica's place, I guess it was kind of a bed and breakfast slash hotel situation going on there. I guess they don't really address that specifically, but then when she makes a comment about like, no, the kitchen is closed, that definitely sounds like it's a situation where it is like a bed and breakfast or something like that. So, and the fact that she lives like all the way at the top with with her husband, which is you know, in her mind basically. Uh, but I just thought it was weird how Daniel immediately shows up and he's just like very mysterious about everything. <laughs> Which, you know, obviously in the end you find out he is the killer, even though Veronica was also a killer uh, and was used kind of as the main red herring in order to make you think that that was how they were tying up the film when they reveal Veronica to be a killer. But no, you get that very end portion where it's like, oh no, ultimately Daniel was the killer. But we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Of course the phone doesn't always work. That's something that Veronica makes a very big point of bringing up is that the phone doesn't work all the time. They have a lot of storms. And then they also say that a storm is rolling in, even when they look outside and it's clear as day. And actually, does the storm even ever happen? I don't think a storm even ever happens because they say there's like an eminent storm rolling in when Daniel first gets there. and Or no, it was when um the couple, the first couple shows up. Oh, and actually, I guess it did kind of rain after that. I just remembered that when they looked out the window and they're like, yeah, there's a storm rolling in, it was like very bright sun coming through. So it was like, mm. unless it was way in the distance. Um, they really make a point of showing Daniel having black gloves on, which indicates, would have indicated him, I thought early on, as a red herring. And this is one of the weird things that this Giallo film actually does. And one of the reasons I didn't like it as much is that they put too many hints in about Daniel being the killer. Like, when he shows up, he's wearing the black gloves a lot. Um, the, the whole situation where Gabriel, the guy who brought the prostitute there eventually, when he goes out to his car and he gets killed because he was looking for cigarettes, all of a sudden they cut to a shot of showing Daniel in his room, sitting at his desk, working on his story, or wor working on his book, and then he is... He has a pack of cigarettes having to sit there, and it's, like, right in front of the camera, basically. So, like, these things, they're hints, but they're, like, very strong. They're, like, very in-your-face and strong. Plus the fact of how, like I was saying, Daniel just oddly shows up, and he's just, like, very secretive about everything. He doesn't want his wife to know where he is. He calls her and then hangs up and won't even speak to her. Like, it, it would have been better, in my opinion, if they made him seem a little more normal. Just saying. But, but like I said, they have that twist in there where Veronica is revealed to be a killer to take your attention away. So I did like that touch. I did. 
Just saying. Uh, Daniel saying he's re uh, he'll read Veronica's eyes. Weird. I mean, the interactions between Daniel and Veronica are just weird in general. Uh, and just to let you know, I watched this film not dubbed or anything. It's just sub. It was just subtitles. It wasn't Spanish. But um, <laughs> yeah, just like he he tells her he'll like when they're having he's having a meal that she made him. She, he says that he'll read her eyes because she's like, oh, you can read hands? He's like, yes, I can, but I'd rather read your eyes. And then he, like, takes his glasses off and it's like, like this really creepy dude. I'm like, okay. Veronica is quite friendly with Daniel, notice, but when the uh, hikers show up, she is very much not friendly with them at all. She's, she's very, very mean, basically. Um, and indifferent to whatever they have going on, which I think is kind of, it plays into the whole thing where Veronica had said that she's kind of sick of that place. She wants to get away. Part of the reason being, you can tell that the trauma she had with the abusive relationship she was in with her husband, who she ended up killing, that that place kind of reminds her of that. And that's what kind of keeps her in that, in that mindset, which is why you end up seeing those scenes of her acting like she's talking to her husband when he's clearly not there and she's playing both the roles. So I think it's this thing of like, she knows that it's tied to like, she has to stay in the trauma because of the place she's in constantly reminding her of that. And that's why she wants to get out. So she's had it with that place. Basically she kind of is a bit dismissive to Daniel in the beginning too. But then when she finds out he's a writer, that's something she takes interest in, but that's why she's probably nice to Daniel and not the other folks. But she takes those hitchhikers in, or those hikers in, obviously. With how all the scenes are shot in Veronica's bedroom, you do get the idea that there is no husband. They don't do the best job of obfuscating the fact that the husband is not there. In fact, the way they do shoot it makes it seem like she is talking to herself or she's talking to a dead body. That was another thing that I thought could have been the situation, is that the husband was there, but he was dead. It was just like a mummified corpse sitting in that chair but no lo and behold we find at the end it's just you know different personalities in her mind going on anna and victor the names of the hikers uh are so are so annoying <laughs> that i actually really couldn't wait for them to end up getting off so when they finally got killed i was very excited about that because they were just annoying characters like they were over the top about everything they weren't nice either i mean veronica wasn't nice to them but they weren't nice either and they were very annoying uh, so you did kind of get this feeling that maybe Veronica did kill them because they were pushing her too much and she was not happy with them in the first place, but ended up being Daniel, obviously. Um, uh, but the kills suck. Like the kills suck in this film for the most part, mainly because the straight razor that they use, not a problem with the straight razor, but you can tell it's like a real fake, fakey looking prop. And every time it's just like lightly kind of like grazed over the skin and you can tell they're just like pumping a lot of blood out and it just doesn't look good. They could have shot it at different angles to make it look a little more convincing, you know, make the cuts go a little bit slower, get the, get the fake blade a little bit closer, you know, apply some more pressure. I don't know, but it just doesn't look very great. Um... So Daniel just took off and nobody knows where he is. That was kind of a big question that popped in my head during it. I was like, what is going on here with him just leaving? His wife doesn't know where he is. Now, when you get to the end of the film, it, I started to think that maybe it's just a situation where, like, this is what he does. He just takes off here and there, and then that's when he goes for his killing outings, basically. And that the killing actually helps him with doing his writing. Or it's a situation where... He does the killing because he's trying to do the writing in a secluded place and people are distracting him. Because if you if you notice, the people who get killed are having loud sex, basically. And so he they do show shots of him kind of noticing that they're making a lot of noise. So it could very well be a motivation of these people are keeping me from getting my great thoughts about for the story onto a page. So I'm just going to kill them. But then there's also that comment that's made by his wife eventually who says that, you know, your characters can do what you can't do. So I assume that maybe it's also a situation where when he's writing a story, he kind of embodies the characters. And maybe he was writing kind of like a serial killer narrative. 
and that's why he needed to kind of like do it and feel it or like he was channeling the character in in some sort of way so there's i mean there's a lot that you can interpret with this film um i like how daniel keeps pushing uh playing a game of chess with veronica's husband because she had said that you know they could do that uh it did seem like he believed that she didn't actually have a husband there or have a husband in the first place so i don't know if it was a case where he kind of knew about her ahead of time i kind of feel like he did because of the the point that they make in the very beginning of the film where he stops at that gas station and talks to that kid who by the way just ends up like randomly popping up all the time which is i don't know weird uh, and i don't understand the kid in this especially don't understand that the kid pops up at the end of the film and you just like stop with him just kind of like smiling and watching after you know daniel waves to him is weird i don't really get that and if anyone does or thinks you you do put it in the comments because i'm intrigued to know what that whole thing is but i think he may have gotten information about veronica from that kid and that that's the reason he went there because maybe he already was planning on killing people or he thought he might kill people and he figured well this person knowing about her she's living there alone she's unhinged and it can be blamed on her which is obviously what ends up happening in the end so just some thoughts on that um i like how gabriel the guy who had the prostitute with him when their car breaks down i love how he's just too horny to fix the car like he messes with it for a little bit but then as soon as ava or eva gets out of the car and wants to take a look then he's just too horny he's just too horny to even focus on the task at hand he's gotta he's gotta start trying to get it on with her weird just just too much but you know it adds to the you know the uh the charisma of the film in a way i'll say there's a point between Daniel and Veronica that one person's place of reprieve can be another person's frustration, basically. Because that's what's going on. You know, Daniel's there to kind of get away. He's there to relax. He feels better there. And maybe part of that's because he's killing. Veronica hates that place, obviously. She wants to get away. So this kind of dichotomy between the two of them of one person's haven versus one person's hell, in a sense, is kind of interesting to watch. How many times are they going to feature a staircase in this film? Specifically that one main staircase. I thought they had way too many shots of that. It got pretty gratuitous. You don't need to keep showing people going all the way upstairs. It's just not necessary. <laughs> so, I mean, from a filmmaking standpoint, from like technical standpoint, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't that great in this film. Especially like there were some, a bunch of scenes that, you know, the camera's like way shaky way shakier than it should be there were there was uh, a part very early on in the film was one of the scenes in the bedroom in veronica's bedroom where the light is like flaring in the camera and it just looks terrible it, overall it looks like super low budget crappy i will say at least the, ki the couples don't get killed until after they're done having sex which is part of what leads me to believe that it is daniel being mad that they're making so much noise which is why he kills them. Because otherwise, he, why would he wait for them to be done with sex? Unless he's just a nice guy like that. When it comes to that. Um, the camera moving backwards. This is the one, Kella, I did kind of enjoy. The the one where Gabriel gets killed in the car. Where he's kind of like laying down. Because he gets jumped in essence. And the camera's like moving backwards. As the razor's coming towards him. So it's like moving back and then you end up seeing his head as the razor's like moving towards him very cool that was a cool inspired shot i really did like that one obviously the cutting still looks super fake but it was a cool shot i like how uh after eva's killed there's a prolonged shot of the calm peaceful lake and woods which is an interesting way to kind of stand in contrast to the tranquility and beauty of the location they're at versus all the terrible violence that's going on with the people who are there. Just saying. I, I like those kind of dichotomy things. And in that moment, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Mario Baba's A Bay of Blood because you have that same situation where it's this amazing, beautiful setting, but the family living there makes it a terrible, bloody, awful place. So how did Daniel's wife find him? That's a big question. I don't think I missed it in the film, 
I mi I'll miss a thing here and there because I'm like taking notes. Um, and when it's subtitled, I'm not, I, I don't stop it. I just keep, you know, take the notes and miss just a little bit. But how did his wife find him? It's like she just like randomly finds him and she's like, oh yeah, there you are. I've been looking for you. Didn't know where you were. Did anyone catch that? Put it in the comments because as far as I saw, there was nothing indicating that she found the information on where he was. She was just like aimlessly driving. It's weird. Um, it, I did have a little bit of a problem. I was thinking once they showed or appeared to show that Veronica was the one behind all the kills, I was like, I was very perplexed because I noticed, especially during the kill of Gabriel in the car, that the arm, because you could see a separation between the black glove and like the, the long sleeve when it was stretching towards him, there was a lot of hair on the arm. So I was like, was it a situation then where they just had a guy play her as the killer so that people wouldn't see that it looked like it was a female arm or you know, the way she walked or whatever. But then you find out in the end, oh, okay, Daniel was the killer in actuality, even though Veronica is also a killer. Uh, I did have a bit of an assumption early on that it would end up being Veronica because they played that angle so hard, but they also play the angle so hard of Daniel. And that's one of the things, like it doesn't fully go by the the Giallo formula in that sense because usually they go really hard at one person who's not the killer as their main suspect that they want the audience to think it is. But with this one, they went pretty hard on both Daniel and Veronica, and they both end up being involved, basically. So it was like, okay, weird. Um, yeah, and that that's kind of the last thing I wanted to say. I, I think the ending was interesting. I like the fact that it was Veronica, which I didn't think was much of a twist because they paint her as having a lot of issues but the twist of, oh, but then Daniel was actually killing when his wife pulls out the razor blade in, like, the the seat of his car. And it's just like, uh. Oh. But then you have that whole weird thing where he waves to the kid and then it shows the kid. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, the production quality is quite low. I already talked about that. The, you know, the camera work issues. The music wasn't very good either. Now, I'm usually a big proponent of using silence uh, a lot in film because it can really help to add tension and let you kind of like feel how you want to about a about a scene or be confused about it with this one there was a lot of no music moments and it was like the most boring moments to do it and I think it worked against it because it just made those moments more boring in my opinion so this is a film where I think it could use more music and I don't say that very often, so yeah, I, I ugh, yeah, not a fun, not not fun. Uh, much like Daniel in the beginning of the film, this film feels pretty aimless to me. Uh, it really does meander. It's definitely sorry, it's definitely too long and unfocused a lot of the time. It seems like they didn't have a lot of actual like good ideas from point A to point B, which is beginning to end. They just need to fill some stuff in there until they got to the twist at the end. So I'm glad I saw it. I, I, I don't, wouldn't recommend it. It's tor it's like second to worst on the bot uh, on my list of Giallo films, honestly. I think I just put it ahead of the Pajama Girl case because I hated that so much. Um, probably technically, though, the Pajama Girl case is better. But from a story point, it just... This annoyed me less, basically. So, yeah. But uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I give it two stars. It's okay-ish. I was between one and a half and two, but I'll give it two stars because it's still Giallo, you know. But anyway, I would like to hear your thoughts on this film. Go ahead and put them in the comments. Love it, hate it, in between on it. Did you have insight that I didn't throw into this film? Do you think I'm wrong about anything in particular and why? Love to get nerdy about this film and just Giallo in general. And if you're into Giallo in general and you're not familiar with my channel, I have a whole playlist of just Giallo reviews and this one will be added to it. I think this is like my 39th Giallo review, something like that. I'm going through a lot of them. Obviously, I have two more here. I have a bunch back here still and more coming. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. But 
Thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. Every time I see someone uh, hit that subscribe button, because I get emails for that, uh, I look at that person, their profile, and I say, this is awesome, thank you to this person. And it helps motivate me, it helps keep me going. You know, we're growing this nerdy horror community and it's more people I can interact with, talk to about these films, because that's the reason I started this channel, truly, because where I live, I didn't have anyone to get super nerdy with horror about, so I was like, I'm going to take the internet to do this. So anyway, um, thanks. Also hit the notification bell button, because you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, blah, 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 all that. But thanks for taking your time to watch this. I do appreciate that. And until next time, keep it brutal.